talk about this is a quick OBGYN and today I'm going to talk about estrogen progesterone estrogen progesterone challenge test in previous video we discussed about progesterone challenge test and now we're gonna test we're gonna read progesterone estrogen progesterone challenge test okay guys so you know very well that's amnuria it's a primary or a secondary amnuria amnuria is nothing but um, uh, absence of what you call menstrual bleeding right so there are two types one is a primary and the secondary what's a primary primary amnuria means she never had menstrual bleeding in her life there are so many causes, chromosomal causes, right? Now, secondary amnuria means she had what you call menstrual bleeding for menstruation for years, but now it has stopped. So, what's the most common cause for a secondary amnuria? It's a pregnancy. So, what you have to do whenever you get the patient of secondary amnuria, you have to do the first test would be the beta HCG. First rule out whether she's a pregnant or not. If she's a pregnant, if beta HCG is positive, then you're well and good. If beta HCG is negative, what's the next step? Measure the TSH and the prolactin because hypothyroidism is the next most common cause for the secondary amnuria. So you have to measure the TSH and the uh, prolactin levels. Okay. Why prolactin? Because the elevated thyrotropin releasing hormone, that's the TRH, in a primary hypothyroidism can lead to elevated prolactin. Remember. Okay. So now. After that, we do progesterone challenge test. Now we do estrogen progesterone challenge test. So what's that? If the progesterone challenge test is negative, if PCT is negative, is negative, okay, is negative, then what we do is we administer 21 days, 21 days of oral estrogen, oral estrogen, followed by seven days of medroxyprogesterone acetate MPA what we do in a PCT that's a progesterone challenge test if beta H is in negative and DSH and the prolactins are normal we administer single dose of progesterone IM or seven days of uh, oral medroxyprogesterone then we see whether it's a positive or a negative if the PCT is positive then it indicates a diagnostic of annulation. If it's a negative, either the estrogen is inadequate or outflow obstruction is there. So estrogen progesterone challenge test, that's an EPCT test will be done if PCT is negative. If PT, PCT is negative means we want to see what's the cause for this, whether there is a low levels of estrogen or whether there's an outflow obstruction, right? So that's what we are going to do over here. So now EPCT will be two things. One is positive. Either it either it can be negative. If the EPCT, that's a estrogen progesterone challenge test, is positive, any degree of withdrawal bleeding is diagnostic. Remember, any degree of withdrawal bleeding means positive EPCT. Withdrawal bleeding, if there is a withdrawal bleeding, that means positive EPCT, okay? So, it's an indicator of what? Inadequate estrogen. Why inadequate estrogen? How we came to know? Because we gave the estrogen in the estrogen progesterone challenge test, but we did not give estrogen in uh, progesterone challenge test. That's why here she is having bleeding, means inadequate estrogen. So, inadequate estrogen means low estrogen. Estrogen is low, okay? Now what happens? Now we have to know the cause for that. Why there is a low estrogen? What we do? Are the two possibilities. We do the two tests. One is we measure what you call FSH. Follicular stimulating hormone FSH. That will help you to identify the cause for this low or inadequate estrogen. If the FSH is elevated, what does it indicate? FSH is secreted by the pituitary. If pituitary means hypothalamic pituitary excess is normal, 
who is a fellow on the part is the ovary, right? The ovary has to give a feedback signal to the pituitary to stop the secretion of what you call FSH. It's not giving any signal to the pituitary or hypothalamus. So what happens? The FSH level will be elevated. Means, if elevated, it means it's an ovarian failure. Right? Mm -hmm. So ovarian failure, if this occurs before 25 years of age, the cause could be Y chromosome mosaism that is associated with the malignancy. So what you have to do is order karyotyping. Remember, in a 25-year-old or in a 24-year-old girl with this, what elevated, what, what you call EPCT, EPCD positive, with elevated FSH, then what you have to do the test is a karyotyping, okay? Because the savage syndrome and a resistant ori syndrome is a condition in which Although the follicles are seen in the ori by sonogram, but they do not respond to what you call gonadotropins. Okay? Savage syndrome and resistant ori syndrome. I don't have the space to write. Just remember, savage syndrome and resistant ori syndrome. What if the FSH is low? If the FSH is low means there is a problem in the hypothalamus and the pituitary because pituitary secretes the high FSH, right? Who gives the signal? It's a hypothalamus. So there is a problem in the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So what you do? Auto CNS imaging because of the brain tumor. She might have developing a brain tumor. Okay? Whatever the reason, woman with a positive EPCT will need estrogen replacement therapy to prevent osteoporosis and estrogen de deficiency morbidity, okay? And cyclic progesterone also required to prevent endometrial hyperplasia. You know very well. Okay, guys? So now this is about the, what you call if the positive EPCT is positive. Okay, now let's see what if the EPCT is negative. EPCT is negative means there is no withdrawal bleeding. No bleeding. No withdrawal bleeding. No WB. There are no withdrawal bleeding. Absence of withdrawal bleeding is diagnostic of either outflow tract obstruction or endometrial scarring. Outflow obstruction or endometrial scarring that's Asherman syndrome. Asherman's syndrome or Asherman syndrome. Okay. What you have to do is a hysterosalpingogram, H-S-G, hysterosalpingogram, salpingogram, okay? We'll identify whether the lesion is Asherman syndrome. What is Asherman syndrome is a result of extensive uterine curtage and infection produced by additions. So the results in the scarring, okay? And uh, it is uh, treated by hysteroscopic ad addition lysis followed by estrogen stimulation of endometrium. Okay, so what's a test you should remember is a hysterosalpingogram. Hysterosalpingogram is really very important. Okay, and uh, there can be a what you call inflatable stent can be placed to prevent the obstruction and, uh, and depending on the cause, the treatment varies. Okay, guys, so this is brief discussion about the EPCT, that's the estrogen progesterone challenge test. I'm sure this video was really very helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.